guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing the effects of exercise on your blood sugar levels so as a bit of a background in case you're new here or you don't follow me over my over on my instagram i have been exercising and training for around five years now i have been properly weight training for three to four of those years and kind of like everyone else since the start of lockdown i have been trying to get better at running and cardio and all that stuff so that's just a background into me and my experience of training i do want to say that although i do have a lot of experience in these areas obviously all of the advice i'm going to be giving is from my own personal experience i am not a medical professional and so please do not make any changes to your diabetes management based purely on what I'm saying, please always consult with a diabetes expert. Now, with all of that housekeeping out of the way, let's get right. So I'm actually gonna split this video into two halves. I'm gonna do how cardio affects your blood sugars and then how weight training affects your blood sugars. Obviously, there are different styles of cardio and different styles of weight training, which do have various different effects on your blood sugars and so in each section i'm going to be explaining the nuances of these because it's not just one size fits all it's not like cardio does this and weights does this there are even more complexities to it so let's jump right in with cardio so like i said at the beginning of this video since lockdown i have really tried to get better at running and i actually ran my first 10k a few months ago now and i did a video explaining all about how i worked my way up from nothing to 10k so if you want to watch that i will leave that linked here but for this video i'm just going to be talking about the effects of cardio for blood sugars now in the cardio section i'm going to be talking about steady state cardio so anything that is hit or high intensity training i will leave that to cover with the weight section because although it is cardio hit and high intensity actually affects your blood sugars more like weights so when i talk about cardio's effect on your blood sugar i'm talking about like a long distance or mid distance run or a jog or a cycle or a swim or anything that is steady state and not too high impact now this form of exercise is kind of does what you would expect exercise to do for your blood sugars and that is it decreases your blood sugars now you may notice a short spike in the first two to five minutes from a burst of adrenaline but generally steady state cardio that isn't too intense won't spike your blood sugars and if it does then it will come down quite quickly as your body gets into the exercise you want to make sure that you are starting this kind of exercise with your blood sugars high enough that you're not going to go low but obviously you don't want to be running your blood sugars high because this is dangerous in like any case but also you should never be exercising and particularly doing heavy intense exercise with a high blood sugar because this is where you can cause complications further down the line what you can do is have a snack before you go on a run and alter your insulin doses which is what i do obviously you don't want to eat anything big because you don't want to be getting a stitch and you don't want to be eating too close to your run so you want to have some kind of fast release sugars maybe half an hour to 20 minutes before your run to give it a bit of time to digest and then depending on how your personal body reacts to cardio and to different foods you will then have either no insulin or a reduced dose of insulin again depending on how many carbs you're having so I personally like to have a few dates around half an hour before I go on a run and then I take insulin but I only take half of the normal dose that I would have for that amount of carbs depending on how many dates I'm going to be having this means that my blood sugar rises slightly before I go on a run, but not so high that it is not safe and not healthy, and but gives me room to, for it to come down without dropping too far because I have reduced my bolus insulin. But obviously there is still a chance that you could go low during a run and when you are out and about, that can be quite dangerous, especially if nobody knows where you are running or that you're even running. So make sure to please carry high post snacks with you when you are on a run in my last video i did a kind of diabetes packing hacks video and showed how i fit my hypo snacks into a bag to go on a run so if you want to have a look at that and think about how you can set yourself up for success doing a run then go over and have a look at that video now if you are doing a super long in distance run or cycle or swim or anything there is a chance that you may need to eat during the exercise because you will be burning through a lot of glucose for high endurance sport. For this kind of situation, it may be helpful to find some kind of sports gel that you can take on your run because like I said earlier, you really don't want to be getting a stitch and you don't want to be eating too much. So a sports gel can be a really good option and I will of course leave some links to those in the description box below but do make sure to check the amount of carbs in the sports gel that you are having and it may take a bit of trial and error to find out 
exactly what sports gel works for you in terms of the amount of carbs because obviously everyone burns different amount of glucose doing various different types of exercise. To test roughly how much carbs you may need on an endurance run, you can do a shorter run and measure how much your blood sugar drops during this shorter run. So for example, a 30 minute run, if your blood sugar drops by three, then you multiply this by how much longer your endurance run is gonna be. So say you've done a 30 minute run and you want to run for an hour and a half. During 30 minutes, your blood sugar dropped by three. So you can estimate that over an hour and a half, your blood sugar is going to drop by nine, although it could very well be more than this as you get increasingly fatigued. So then you know that when you do your hour and a half run, you need to take enough carbohydrates with you to prevent a drop of nine. So whether that is 10 grams of carbs for your personal ratios or 20 or 30, you can then go out and find a sports gel or something similar to suit that amount of carbs to ensure that you don't go hypo when you're doing your endurance run. Now, one thing to bear in mind if you are doing super long distance or endurance or a distance that is significantly longer than a distance you have previously done, you may notice for the first one to two runs that your blood sugar actually spikes an hour to two after your run because of a whole bunch of hormones going on, some adrenaline and your body is just a bit in shock. So I noticed this after my first 10 Okay, I got home, my blood sugar was about four and I had food and my normal insulin. And then an hour or two later, I think it was, I shot up to 15. I obviously wasn't expecting this because normally you would expect your blood sugar to go down. So just make sure that you are keeping an eye on your sugars. Generally, after the first couple of runs of the same distance, you probably won't experience this massive blood sugar spike if you did in the first place and you probably will experience lower blood sugars for an hour to three hours after some kind of endurance sport and possibly even longer depending on how long you were training for. Always recommend to keep a much much closer eye on your blood sugars for at least four hours after any kind of steady state cardio because you don't know what is going to happen and often you will be slowly dropping as your muscles use up glucose for recovery. However, after steady state cardio like this, they won't drop as much as they may after weight training. And so now I'm gonna talk so a bit about So anything that. that I say for weight training is equally applicable for HIIT style training or any really high intensity short burst exercise because your body produces a similar-ish hormone response and particularly what we are looking out for as diabetics is the adrenaline response which can cause your blood sugar to rise. Now this blood sugar spike from adrenaline can often occur during weight training and HIIT and it occurs especially with weight training if you are doing a low rep high weight training where you are being less energetic and moving a bit less but lifting a heavier load because you are mainly having the effect of the adrenaline without actually burning through too much glucose in that moment. If you are doing a higher volume day where you are doing more reps and you're having shorter rest periods and you're moving a lot and burning through a lot of glucose during the workout, then you very well may not experience this spike or you might spike slightly and then come down very, very quickly. So like I said at the beginning of this video, it's not just one size fits all for weight training. You will need to plan ahead so that you know what type of session exactly you are doing before you work out what your insulin is going to be and what you may need to eat beforehand. Because of this blood sugar spike from the release of adrenaline, some people may actually need to take more insulin before doing weight training, particularly if you are training fasted because that kind of throws your hormones out of whack a bit. So although you may be told that exercise will reduce your blood sugar and you need to lower your insulin, this isn't always the case, especially if you're doing like I said, anything that involves a lot of adrenaline, like high weight training or HIIT training. So I personally do not like to train fasted and I always have at least something before I do a workout. Normally at the moment, this is a banana because I work out quite early at the moment and it means I can just eat and get on with it. So I personally have the banana and inject for the amount of carbs in that banana and do not change my insulin ratios. I don't increase my insulin and I don't reduce my insulin unless I'm starting lower or higher with a like lower or higher blood sugar than I would like to. Now obviously, like I always say, what works for me will not work for you, but this is just something that I am suggesting 
if you want to try it before while you're working out exactly how your body responds. So for me, having a banana but also having insulin to cover all of the carbs in that banana means that I negate that adrenaline spike. Normally, obviously we know diabetes doesn't always go to plan, but normally I will negate that adrenaline spike because I will have had enough insulin to cover that, but in general I don't tend to go low. Now there is the occasion that towards the end of my workout my blood sugar does start to drop and in that case I always have dextro tablets in the gym with me in case I am starting to drop before my workout is over and also straight after my workout I may tend to drop a bit quicker so I always make sure to try and eat half an hour to 45 minutes post workout and that's when I have my breakfast and that's just what works for me with routine. I have dextrose tablets just to stop me from going low while I'm working out and then make sure to eat some long acting carbohydrates post workout. So for me that is oats with some protein but again it totally depends what works for you and what food you enjoy to eat around your workout. Obviously with that being said if I do experience an actual hypo during training or if I am dropping and not feeling well I will stop because training with a low blood sugar can be extremely dangerous and you are putting yourself at such a big risk of injury it is not worth carrying on. Also can depend on the muscle group or the style of training that you are doing. So personally for me I find that on upper body days I do tend to see more of a spike in my blood sugar from the adrenaline and it doesn't tend to come down as fast as when I'm doing a leg day and especially if I'm doing a high volume leg day I tend to not see a spike at all and in general those are the days where I'm more at risk of going low because they tend to be more high energy I'm burning through glucose really really quickly whereas upper body I take it a bit more slowly and control so sometimes I will reduce my insulin before a leg day and sometimes I will increase my insulin before an upper body day if I know they're going to be particularly energetic or particularly slow and controlled. Now after completing a weight session you are likely to have a much more increased insulin sensitivity and even more than after having done steady state cardio. This can last for eight hours or even more depending on how intense your weight training session was so you really do need to keep a close eye on your blood sugars for a long time after your workout at least four hours and probably nearer eight hours obviously this is easier said than done if you have if you have to like finger prick manually i'm really lucky that i have the libra and at the moment i just got the meow meow which i'm really excited about um i've only had it on for like a day or so but i'm loving it already but anyway that's a complete different tangent what i'm saying is you probably will want to do a couple of finger pricks in between meals after weight training just to check that you are in range and again especially if it has been a really intense session you will burn through a lot of glucose after those for your muscles to recover. At the beginning of this section HIT is very very similar to weight training in the body's response so I personally do tend to see an adrenaline spike in my blood sugars when I begin HIT. However, because HIT is so energetic and so intense, you are burning through glucose very quickly. And so my blood sugar will come back down a lot quicker than when I'm doing a weight training session. And so there is a chance that you may go low towards the end of a HIT session, but because a HIT session should be short and sweet, no longer than kind of 20 to 30 minutes, generally I tend to not go low before it's over because I make sure to eat before and take the right amount of insulin so I do pretty much the same as what I do for a weight training session sometimes if I know it's going to be a really intense hit session I will reduce my insulin slightly and also it depends where I am in terms of my menstrual cycle if you've watched a lot of my day in the life so you will have seen that that really alters my insulin sensitivity so again these are all factors that you will need to consider before deciding on your insulin dosage and what you want to eat before any type of exercise like with any exercise you will also in experience an increased insulin sensitivity after HIIT training. However, I personally find that HIIT can be a bit of a weird one. Now, I tend to have a massive drop in my blood sugars, but it doesn't occur for me until three to four hours after HIIT training. So for me, in general, I have a bit of a spike when I begin my HIIT training. It then comes down very quickly. I may go quite low or nearly low straight after HIIT training and eat something. After then I tend to be a bit steady but around three to four hours again I tend to drop off. Now again this is a personal thing and a lot of people may not experience this but it's just something to look out for. I will tend to always reduce the amount of insulin I have for any food that I eat three to four hours after hit and if I'm not planning to eat during that time period I will always make sure to have lots of hypo snacks 
on me and around me because I know that that is a prime time where I might have a hypo. So that is a brief summary of the effects of different types of exercise on your blood sugars. We've covered weight training, HIIT and steady state cardio. If you are new to weight training and wondering where to start with diabetes, I would definitely recommend having a look at my What I Wish I Knew before I started weight training with type 1 diabetes video which I will link here and if you have any questions about anything that I've said or about any other kind of exercise or anything that you would like clarified then please always leave me a comment down below and I will reply to that as soon as possible. If you did enjoy this video and found it informative please give it a like because it really helps to know what kind of videos you are enjoying seeing but for now that is it for this one and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>